Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how I set up the irrigation system for my container garden. And this is probably the thing I get asked about the most because I think a lot of people, including me, just a few years ago, think that setting up irrigation is very difficult and I promise you it is not. As long as, at least in my opinion, you start with a kit that comes with all of the pieces that you need. So I'm going to show you today how I do it so that hopefully I can convince you how easy it is. Now, I don't think an irrigation system is a need in the garden. I mean, I could water my gardens with the hose. It would probably take me 30 minutes total, but one, this can save you time in the morning and give me 30 minutes back in my day that I'll probably also spend in the garden doing other things. But what I definitely love having an irrigation system for is going out of town because I remember when we would go out of town even just for a weekend I would be filling plastic jugs pricking little holes in them trying to set up different workarounds in my garden to water my plants while we were gone but now I have a system that runs automatically every day if I need it to that waters my garden even if I'm not here so I definitely recommend if you either just want to save yourself some time each day or you want to make sure that your garden is getting watered when you're out of town that you invest in an irrigation system so I have two different kits that I've used over the last three years I first got the proven winners water wise system because I saw Laura from garden answer use it and then I got the Carpathian irrigation kit from Amazon and I like both of them I still have both of them set up in my front deck because I'm too lazy to ever start from scratch um, but the WaterWise Proven Winners system I would say is best if you only have a few pots like maybe no more than 10 to 20 pots and the pots are relatively small. If you have a larger garden I consider mine a larger garden I mean it's an 18 by 19 square foot uh, deck so it's probably not considered large to a lot of people but if you have either larger containers or larger than just a few pots I would recommend getting something that's a little bit more powerful like the Carpathian system. The proven winner system the emitters where the water comes out of is just little drips at a time so it's very concentrated to a smaller area whereas the Carpathian system has emitters that look like this and I'll talk more about emitters and what they are but this sets out a little like sprinkler so it can cover more area faster than a drip irrigation kit can. So that's just my preference between the two kits that I do have and on this back deck here since I have two years now of knowledge of drip kits which I've learned so much in two years I'm just using the Carpathian system back here because for me that makes more sense when I'm trying to cover I don't even know how many containers I have out here, but a lot. And from what I can tell on looking through Amazon, so these are the only two brands I've ever used. They work fine. I haven't really branched out into anything new, but when I do look at other systems on Amazon, they seem to be relatively similar to the Carpathian system, like similar parts that do similar things and connect in similar ways. So I'm sure there's a lot of different brands that probably work equally as well. Um, so I'm hoping that as I'm going through and talking about these pieces and how the system works, that it will be applicable if you are using something else in your garden. But there are so many different ways to irrigate. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. Now, I actually think this video will cover two days because I've already spent a lot of time in the garden this morning. I can talk about the irrigation system, but I don't know if I feel like actually doing the setup right now. Um, so I think I'll talk through the pieces, show you how it's set up today, and then tomorrow we'll actually go through and I will show you how I set it up step by step in my garden. Now, I will say I do have a lot of it already set up, um, but it's so repetitive that I didn't want to have you watch me do the whole entire thing but I have a little section of the garden that I'll show you step by step what I do and that's just basically repeated for every container that I have but first let me talk to you about the Carpathian system that I use the different pieces that it comes with and how all those pieces fit together so I think over the last three years I've probably had three different Carpathian kits because one kit of either the Proven Winners or Carpathian can't cover my entire deck, so I needed to get other kits so that I can expand it. And I've also had to buy pieces individually as well. Um, so I ran out of tubing, I've ran out of emitters, and I've had to purchase those separately. So do know that you can get a kit, and then whatever additional pieces you need, you can buy those individually. But I would definitely recommend starting with a kit because that's gonna come with everything you need. And then once you get started, you can see what you might need additional parts for. Now I will say that because I've had three 
different systems over time. It does seem like there's been some minor changes um, in like the pieces that they provide or the width of some of the pieces. So I'm going to talk in general, but if you get a kit, especially from Carpathian, things might be a little bit differently sized or look a little bit different. So just letting you know ahead of time, I'm mean, even between like the first and the third kit that I had, some of the measurements in the instruction manuals are different. I also do have the instructional instruction manuals here because I make up words for things that aren't necessarily the correct terms. Um, so instead of saying like the thingamajig, I feel I would actually say like the female thread coupler. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk through what it comes with, explain how the pieces work, and then show you how it connects to your faucet. So first off, the kit comes with two differently sized tubes. There's a bigger tubing, so the width on this is larger, it's about a half inch, and then there's a smaller tubing. This one is about a quarter inch. I think, what does it say? There's 60 feet of both, at least in one of the original kits that I got. So the water is going to run through these tubes to your containers. The larger tubing, so the half inch tubing, is going to run around your garden. So it's basically going to carry the water like from one container to another, like between the containers. This is running all the way around my deck. The quarter inch tubing takes the water from this main line. So this is the one that connects to your hose as well. The quarter inch tubing takes the water from the main line and puts it into your pot. So one thing that you're gonna have to do is connect the larger tubes to the smaller tubes and it comes with pieces to do that. So this piece, right here is called a coupler. And this is made specifically to connect the larger tube to your smaller tube. Again, I will show you specifically how I do this when I set it up in my garden. But you connect this coupler to this tube and then where this little nozzle is, you shove this tube in there and that's how they connect. Actually, let me take off, I untwist this end how this specific system works is that little cap goes on. I would then shove this in there. I'm not going to, because it can be hard to take these apart once they're together, but then I would turn this back on and this tube would be running there. And then this tube would be on here. So that's how you connect like the main drip line to the smaller drip line that's then going to go into your pot. And when you put it into your pot, you need to have an emitter or else water is just going to pour right out of this tube, and that's not what you want. So you'll have an emitter that then connects to the other end of that quarter inch tube, and that's what goes in your plant. So you have the large tube, you put a coupler on it, the coupler connects to the quarter inch tube, the other side of that tube connects to your emitter, the emitter goes into your pot. So that's kind of the simplest explanation that I can give of all of those different pieces. Now I'm gonna get a little bit more detailed and hopefully not too overwhelming. Um, but not only, at least again, in this kit, it might be different for other kits, but you see this coupler has one connection for a quarter inch tubing, which if you again only have a few pots, maybe that's all you need, just one emitter coming off with that quarter inch tube. It also comes with couplers that have two quarter inch connectors and couplers that have four quarter inch connectors. Because I have so many pots and I want to get a lot of emitters coming off of that main line, I'm mostly using these in my garden. So I'm connecting this one spot to the larger tube and then I can get four different connections to the quarter inch tube. Now if you then want to split your quarter inch tubing into more pieces so that you can have more emitters coming off of one connection to the main drip line. It comes with either T splitters or I think they're called crossbar splitters. So T splitters look like this, crossbar splitters look like this. So there's just basically one more little connection piece and that's the difference between the two. Um, the Carpathian kit comes with those, but the two I just showed you are actually in a separate kit that I got from Amazon. So this is not the Carpathian brand, but now that I know and I have an idea of how a drip irrigation system works, I can customize it a little bit by getting some more pieces that aren't necessarily part of the same system. But a lot of irrigation kits use quarter inch tubing. So there's a lot of pieces, 
that can work with your irrigation kit, even if they're not the same brand. Now you wanna make sure that if you are looking at individual pieces, that the sizing and dimensions match so you're getting something that actually fits together. Now I promise you how all of those pieces connect together will make a lot more sense when I show you step by step how I set it up but I want to talk about a few of the other pieces that the kit comes with. So it comes with two different emitters and the emitter is just the word for where the water comes out into your pot. So this one is called the vortex and then what is this one called? This one is called the stream emitter. How these work is if they're twisted all the way down to the right, it's the same for both of them, no water comes out. The more I twist to the left, the larger the diameter of the spray of water. It does come off completely, so if you twist it too much, again, water's just pouring out, so you don't want to do that. But if I have this twisted up the highest it can go before it falls off, that'll give me the largest diameter. I say I have a mix somewhere between like just barely open versus maybe halfway open depending on the diameter of my containers and how much area I want it to cover. The difference between these two emitters is that this one, the Vortex, emits water in a circle. So kind of like a full circle just pouring over the edge of this, whereas the stream, if you can see there, there's the individual holes all the way. Oh don't mean to flick you off, the individual holes all the way around, those are going to emit in a stream. Now, they both work fine for me. I think they recommend this one more for like trees and shrubs, this one more for the garden. I use both in my container garden and they both work fine. Um, they also have some now that you can like twist a cap off and put a different cap on if you wanna switch and have more of one or the other. Um, but I use both of these in the garden. I tend to use the stream one more for my larger containers, although it's not 100% true of the time. And then this one more in my smaller containers. So those are the two different types of emitters it comes with. It also comes with a female coupler. So this is what attaches the larger tube to your hose. So I would, again, you put this little cap on first. I would then connect that to the tube, the coupler to the tube, twist it up. That makes a strong connection. And then this is what attaches to your faucet or your timer. Hopefully you have a timer because if you're going to bother setting up an irrigation system, you want a timer so that it waters automatically. So this is what's gonna connect it to your hose. Um, some other things that it comes with are an end plug. So at some point, you're going to get to the end of where your drip system runs. So I just use one of these at the very, very end of my garden. Again, that's gonna just connect like this, and that just stops the water at the end of your drip run. So those are pretty much the main individual pieces that I use. Um, let me now take you over to where all of this is connected to the faucet and talk through the different pieces over there. Actually, before I take you over to the timer, I'm going to show you this part, which is already set up on my garden. And these are all the pieces that I already just went over. So hopefully looking at them now will be a bit more helpful to understanding how they all work together. So this right here, is again that half inch drip line, the larger tube that you get. And this runs just basically the entire length of my deck. So all the way around my deck, this is running. When you want to attach the coupler that connects the half inch tube to the quarter inch tube, you have to make a cut. So I first I ran the entire tube around my deck, then I made a cut wherever I wanted to put one of these couplers. And then I attached each side of where I made the cut to the coupler. Now I showed you that there are three different couplers, one with one quarter inch connection, this one has two, and then some with four. Again, you're gonna choose which one you're gonna use based on how many containers you need to set up from this connection. So then I have the quarter inch tube connected here, connected here. So let's just follow this one quarter inch tube. Here I made another cut and I, inserted this crossbar. So I inserted this here in the main line from the quarter inch, and then I added on a tube here and a tube here. So from this main drip line, half inch drip line, quarter inch comes off, I get to the crossbar. From the crossbar, I attach a tube. At the end of this tube, 
is the emitter. So I have one emitter from this crossbar. Come over here, this tube, so off of this cut, is connected to this emitter. So now I have two emitters. And then this one, let me move you over here, is connected to that emitter. So basically, from one quarter inch connection, if I use a crossbar, I can get three emitters from that. So that's kind of how I know which of the couplers I need to use, is that from each of these connections, I can get three emitters from that. So this one, I only needed six total. So I just used the coupler that has two connections. So that's how it looks all together. And then obviously you can see the drip tube now. I don't really care if I see the drip at all because I'd rather have it working um, than my garden not get watered while I'm on vacation. But I do try to tuck like the larger lines back there so you can't really see them. And once the plants grow, there's no plants here yet, but once I put plants on here and they grow, you're not even going to notice the irrigation system. We're over by the faucet now, so I can show you how the irrigation system connects to the water source. And we do have water access on both of the decks, which makes gardening a lot easier. Now, at our last place that we were renting, I did garden on a deck and we did not have a faucet. So my husband did find a way to connect a garden hose to a bathroom sink. And the bathroom was, I'd say between 20 to 30 feet away from the deck door. So just know that if you don't have water set up outside, it is possible to get a hose set up to a sink inside. But back to the setup here. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to get, and I recommend this for everybody, is a hose splitter. That just basically turns your one faucet into more faucets. This one has two, the one on my front deck has four. So get something that'll give you multiple faucets so that you can have your hose set up here and then your irrigation system set up there. That way you don't have to like take your irrigation system off if you wanna use a hose. I can use my hose while the irrigation system is running. So highly recommend that you get a hose splitter. Also recommend, like I said, that you get a timer because I don't know what the point of having an irrigation system would be if you don't have a timer set up to actually run your system for you automatically. So I will link down the video below where I talk through more specifically the timers that I use, but just know that you wanna get some sort of timer. This one is a Mr. Timer that I found on Amazon. The one on my front deck is a smart timer that connects to my phone. This one, I guess, is not a smart timer. Um, I just do everything, I program it here. I can't do anything from my phone. It doesn't connect that, uh, it doesn't connect to my phone basically in any way. I do like it though. Uh, I might invest in a smart one back here at some point, but I don't want to spend that money right now. So a few other pieces here that you just want to be aware of. First, it's important that you have some sort of filter. And every single timer that I've ever bought, I think I've bought three, came with a filter on it. The filter on the Mr. Timer is right here. So there's just a little filtration screen in there. And basically the whole point of that is that the water that's coming from your tap might have dirt, might have debris, and that could potentially clog up your tube. So just keep that in mind. Again, it's never something I've had to purchase separately. It's always just existed with any timer that I've bought. The next component that you might want to be aware of is a backflow preventer. And that is what I have right here. My proven winner system came with a backflow preventer the Carpathian system did not, so I got this on Amazon. It's not very expensive. I will link it down below, but basically you don't want anything that's in here in the irrigation system itself to go back <laughs> into the hose faucet or back into your timer or anything like that. So if you don't have a backflow system uh, with your kit that you get, you might want to invest in one separately and just connect that to your timer. Another component I have here, which is absolutely not necessary, is this gold piece, and that is a hose elbow. Uh, someone recommended that I get one for my hose reel on the front deck, and I realized it would work perfectly here too. Again, not expensive at all. All this basically does is give me a 90 degree angle. So with my timer, so basically with the splitter, the timer, um, the backflow preventer, I only have about an inch here, and I don't wanna kink this irrigation line, by trying to connect that underneath there. With this hose elbow, this gives me a 90 degree angle. I can just connect right there, no kinks in my line. So you don't need this 
at all unless you have some sort of issue with the direction or the angle you're trying to connect your irrigation system to, but it has worked really well for me in my setup. And then this here, that is the female coupler that connects to the faucet that I showed you. So this came with the Carpathian system and this is that half inch larger tubing. So there are, again, a few other pieces up here that you just want to be aware of. Um, know that your timer probably will come with a filter, but double check that your system may or may not come with a backflow preventer. So you might want to get one and then the hose elbow just if you need a better angle to connect everything to. Another component that you might hear of, but I don't need one with the Carpathian system, is a pressure regulator. I do have a pressure regulator. Again, it's not super expensive. It's pretty cheap from Amazon, but I have that for my proven winter system because that is literally one drip at a time. So not a lot of water is coming out. You don't want a huge amount of pressure running through that system because it could like explode the tubing or knock your emitters out. But with the Carpathian system, because it's tiny little sprinklers, there's a lot more water flowing through. So I don't need a pressure regulator. Now I hope that's not like too much information I'm giving you, but just in case you come across that, I want you to be aware of it. If you are noticing that there's so much pressure from your system that the emitters are coming out, then you might want to get a pressure regulator. I don't need that for this system. So with that, I know I said I didn't necessarily feel like setting it up in the garden, but now I kind of do. Um, so let me show you the area that I have not set up yet and hopefully walking through it will make it make a little bit more sense. From that faucet then you can see where the half inch tube is. And like I said, this is running behind all of my containers. So it's running along the little fence there behind all the pots. If I come over here, you can see, I think, unless the sun is too bright, but the tube is right there. It runs behind all of these raised beds and it's the quarter inch or the smaller tubing that's actually going into my pots and my raised beds. This right here is a section that I don't have set up yet. And of course it was nice and overcast until I want to show you what I'm doing. And then hopefully I can do this without my shadow being in the way too much. But what I've been doing is I use one emitter per container because again, I can open by twisting the emitter higher and that gets a good amount of spray. I'd say maybe it covers about a foot. So in each of these pots here, I only need one. And then in the raised bed, I've been putting three. So in this case, I'm setting up here, I need one, two, three, four, five, six. And I know that with this coupler, for each quarter inch connection, if I use the crossbar, I can get three emitters set up to each. So I can get three from this one, three from this one. So I'm just gonna use the coupler here that has two connections to the quarter tubing instead of the one that had one or the one that had four. So now let me show you how this connects to that larger tubing, the half inch tubing that's running all the way around behind my containers. So I'm just pulling up the tube from behind the bed. This is just going to lay on the deck, but I need to again put on this coupler. So just find kind of good central position between where you want it to go. It doesn't really matter because you can make the quarter inch tube that you attach as long or as short as you want, but just find somewhere close to where you want the emitters to be. Then I'm going to take my pruners and make a cut. So I'm just going to snip this, hold on to the ends because it'll fall behind the container. But I just made a cut right there. Then with this coupler, I'm going to twist off one end. So this part here might not be how every coupler that you have in your system, if it's not Carpathian connects, um, but I take one end that I just twisted off and I put it onto one side of the tubing. I'm going to twist off, you know, it'd really be helpful if I just had three hands, not more. I know if I had three, I'd probably say more, but three would probably work. Um, so I'm taking off now, twisting the other end. This piece is going to go over here. Then I just 
jam the tubing onto this side and onto this side. I'm gonna put this down here. So one end of the tube. It does require like a little bit of strength, but not too bad. So I just put that on there and then I twist this back on and that just makes the connection very secure. Same thing on this end, jam the tube on. Usually I can get it on by just pushing, but sometimes twisting helps too. And then twist on the other end. So again, you run this main line, the larger tube, and wherever you want to have an emitter coming into a pot, you need to make that cut and put the coupler on. Then next we're going to attach the quarter inch tubing to both of these connection points. Now I have the quarter inch tubing here in my left hand. I have the coupler that connects the half inch to quarter inch tube in my right hand. And again, I'm just gonna jam the quarter inch tube onto this little connection point. And there we go. Now from this quarter inch tube, if I were to cut it and put the emitter on, I could do that, but now I have to run a whole other line just to have one other emitter. And this whole section here would only give me two emitters to water two sections of my garden. So that's why I'm gonna make a cut and put in this crossbar. So let's do that now. Something that I will do, so again, this tube is gonna be laying on the ground and I wanna make sure I have enough length where I make my cut. So I'm gonna now put that back on the ground so that now I know where exactly I want to cut. I've made a cut now in the quarter inch tube. So this part is connected to the main irrigation system. This part is connected to nothing. So I'm gonna put that down. And then on this end, I'm putting in one end of the crossbar, doesn't matter which end. Let's just go with this one. And again, just shoving these in together. I do find it easier to make the connections like shoving the pieces together when the weather is warmer um, because I think that loosens up the tube a bit. So now that I have the crossbar, I can connect three emitters from here. So I'm gonna take the other part of that quarter inch tube that I cut and I'm gonna just put it on one of the ends of the crossbar here. Again, it doesn't matter which end, just put it on somewhere. So now on this tube, I'm going to make a cut and that's where I'm going to attach the emitter. So first I need to figure out where the emitter is going to go, again, to figure out how long of a piece of tube I need. So let's say that that, again, is gonna hang down over there. Um, this will be maybe my middle. Actually, I changed my mind because the sun and the shadows aren't quite as bad over here. So we have that original crossbar here. This tubing that's going to connect to emitter, I'm going to run to that furthest pot over there because that one needs to be set up. So I need to get enough length for it to reach over there. inch tubing is on the ground running now to this pot so I'm going to make a cut attach the emitter and that's all I need to do to get this pot set up to my irrigation I'm also just to kind of keep things looking a little tidier pull it under the leg of this bed here now I'm going to connect this tube to the emitter again just by shoving them together. I'm sure that's the technical term that Carpathian would use. This one I do find a little bit of a twist helps to get it onto the emitter but you just want to make sure there's a good connection so that when the water is flowing through the tubing doesn't pop off of the emitter. So that is good there and now I'm just gonna stick this, I tend to stick it towards the center of a pot when I'm using a pot, so 
let's put it right in there. And then something else I recommend doing, let me move this zinny out of the way without breaking it, is I'm gonna twist all the way down to the right, which turns this off. Then when I do a test run, I'll come around and open up the emitter as much as I want based on how wide of a spray I need. And now just to clean things up a little, kind of tuck things back here. And there's one down. Now I'm gonna get this container and my grow bag with my Dahlia set up in the exact same way from that original crossbar. So I have the crossbar here. Again, this is what we just put into the pot with the zinnia. This is the tube that's connected to the large tubing, so where the water access is coming from. So now I just need to, again, jam the tube onto one of the other openings in the crossbar. And we'll put this one into the Dahlia bag. So, cutting about here should be good. Taking an emitter, putting it onto the quarter inch tube. Again, this is where I find twisting helps to connect these together. And then I'm gonna twist this all the way closed to the right and stick it into that bag. Now I did push it not too forcefully just in case it hit a tuber and I wanted to pull it back out, but I just put it maybe about an inch away from the stem. So now I need to go back to the crossbar here to set up that final pot. So I have one free end left. I have the quarter inch tubing. I'm gonna stick it on there. There's that. So this whole crossbar is now full. It's connected to the main tube line and it's gonna be connected to three different emitters. Put that down there. Run the tube here. Right about here should be good to put it in the center of this pot. Obviously, at this point, make sure your containers are where you want them because if you're still moving them around, uh, you're gonna be cutting drip lengths for pots that are no longer there. So here, I'm just gonna cut right here and I need to grab an emitter. Other side of that quarter inch tube, put the emitter on, give it some good twists. And then I'm closing the emitter and putting it delicately around the flowers that are in there, right into the center of this pot. So let me go back and show you everything we just did. So this again is that large half inch tube that's running the entire length of my deck. We made a cut. We put in one of the couplers. Then on this little connection piece, we connected a quarter inch tubing. And then in that tubing, we made another cut. Put in this crossbar from each available opening on that crossbar, we put in quarter inch tubing. Find the length of the tube that we need for wherever we want the emitter to go. Make a cut, attach the emitter. And that is how you set up your drip. There it is in there. So these three pots are now set up. Now I'm gonna finish it up by putting three emitters in this raised bed. So that's gonna come off of the other connection on that coupler from the larger tubing. I'm not gonna talk through this one the same way I talked through the other three pots, but I will have it on camera as I go through it.
there we go. Three set up in here, three set up here. And honestly, if I wasn't talking, it probably would have taken like five to 10 minutes. So it doesn't take very long, but now that whole section is complete. Now, normally if I was completely done, I would run the drip system manually and kind of check everything, make sure everything's connected together. I didn't miss anything, but I do know that I need to finish up a little bit in that section, which I don't feel like doing right now. Um, so if I turn it on right now, because I don't have everything connected, there would be like openings where water would just pour out of. So I'm not going to do that now. Um, but yeah, let me see if there's anything else that I get asked about a lot. As far as how long or how often to run your systems for, I get asked about that a lot. That is going to 100% depend on your garden and your environment, size of your containers, how warm it gets. But here is what I would say to do. Um, do a manual run from your timer. All timers should have a way for you to run your system manually instead of just scheduling it to run automatically and watch it. Uh, maybe set it for, so I would say with this Carpathian system, generally I just run it for two to three minutes. Maybe set it for, let's say, five minutes. If you start to see water pouring out of the bottom of your containers before the five minutes is up, set the time for shorter. Um, if by the time you get to five minutes there's a few drips coming out of your container, then you're probably good. If, let's say, you run it for five minutes, there's nothing dripping, and then you're out there later in the day, I would recommend watering in the morning. You're out there later in the day and everything is wilting and the soil feels dry to the touch. You either need to run it for longer in the morning or maybe run it twice a day. I would say right now I'm not, definitely not running it every day because we're still relatively cool, but once the temperatures are in like the 90 degrees, it runs every day. Um, some of my smaller pots do dry out by the afternoon, but if it's not something where I have to run the entire system, then I'll just water those individual pots with a hose. But yeah, those are all of my tips. Again, hopefully this was helpful and not overwhelming. And let me know if there are still other questions that you have down below.